everyone, it's Robin Riley for Del Bello's Designs. Welcome to my video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create the this card and this ATC using some scrap double-sided card that I had laying around. I think you'll enjoy this and see how easy this is to make a very quick and effective card. Before we get started on all of the supplies, I want to talk to you a little bit about our Facebook groups. I hope you have joined, and if not, come on over and join. It's simple and easy to do. We have two pages. We have the Del Bellos Design Lounge. That's where we showcase all of the great Lavinia products. And we have another page. That one's called the Del Bellos Designs a la carte page. And there we showcase all of the other products that Patty currently has in her shop. We are on other social me media platforms. We're on Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok. And there, all you have to do is go and search hashtag Del Bello's Designs, and you'll find us and get a lot of inspiration. Okay, so back to the card and the ATC that I'm going to be creating today. Let's look at the supplies that will be needed. First of all, the card. The topper of the card measures four and a quarter by five and three quarter inches, and I like to use a nice heavyweight card for all of my toppers. For the strip that will be going on the left side of the card, this is a piece of that double-sided paper that I cut two inches by five and three quarter inches. The base of my card measures six by nine inches, and it is scored at the four and a half inch mark. Now let me show you the ATC sizes. Now ATC cards measure two and a half by three and a half inches. Just think of the old baseball cards. That's the exact same size. And what's nice about this is if you start collecting these, which a lot of people like to collect ATCs, you can keep them in those baseball pockets that you can buy and add to a notebook. So that's that's just kind of a neat thing to do. The strip that's going to be going on this card, again, it's just another scrap piece of paper and it measures two inches by three and a half inches. The stamps that I'm using today, this is an oldie but goodie. This is the Mystical Swirl LAV. Five, eight, nine. Grace, there's two sizes of Grace. There's a small and a large. I am using, using the small size, LAV484. She's a little bit over three and a third inches, and the large one is about an inch longer. Next, I'll be using the Woodland Ferns. That is LAV729. The Fairy Bugs, this is a great set to have, LAV471. Today I'm just going to use the Butterfly. And lastly, the Three Blessings, whoops, the Three Blessings set, LAV673. You get the three words, hope, happiness, and faith. And here's the paper pad that I was talking about. This is the Lavinia Dreamscapes Paper Color Burst Collection. The size that I have is eight by eight inches. It comes with 30 double-sided sheets in 10 different designs. And this is, the designs are absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, I'll flip through just a few colors for you to see both sides are covered. What a nice, quick way to make a very effective card. But look how beautiful, I throw my scraps in here, these colors are. Let me share one more set with you. Look at that. Absolutely wonderful. And they stamp. To stamp on this, absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's move on with the other supplies that I used here. So for the ink, I'll be using Versamark because as you can see on both, I hope you can see, there's some embossing that I do. So Versamark ink is needed. This ink is like a glue. I will be using VersaFine Claire and Monarch along with VersaFine Claire Shady Lane. For the embossing, I will use the Wow embossing powder. This one is opaque, opaque, bright, white, super fine. Anytime you use 
a stamp that has real fine elements to it, you wanna use an embossing powder that's labeled super fine. It just makes the detail stand out so much better. The other tools that I'll be using. To crease my card, I like to use a bone folder, but you can use whatever you like, your fingernail, you can use the side of a pencil, whatever works for you. I will be using a Lavinia stencil brush. This is the larger one. I will be using a few Jelly Roll pens. This is a glitter pen uh, in purple, and this is a, a pen from Sakura, the Jelly Roll pen. This is a clear one that has glitter. For the grounding of the fairy, I am just going to use a dark gray colored pencil. I will use the acrylic block for some of my stamping. For the other stamping, I will be using my Misty stamping tool. This is the type of adhesive I love to use. This is the Designer's Dry Clear Adhesive. Works wonderful when adhering pieces to your card and your topper to the card base. And also a heat tool of some sort will be needed for the embossing. Okay, I think I've covered all of the supplies that are needed. If I left anything out, I'll be sure to note that when we get to it. But always remember that in the description box below will be a complete list of all of the supplies that I used. Okay, let's do the card first. That's where we're going to start. Let me bring in my card base and well, that one already has a mark on it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start simply with the background. And to do that, I am going to use an acrylic block with that mystic swirl. And I will be using the VersaFine Clear Monarch. Let me grab a piece of scrap paper here real quick. Pal here off to the side. What I'm going to do is ink up the stamp with the Monarch. And I'm going to stamp off. What that means is I'm just going to take my scrap paper and I'm going to stamp the majority of that ink off. And then I'm going to randomly stamp a few of these images. And I want this very light appearance. Do you see how light that is? That's the effect that I'm going for. Now I don't need to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do down both the sides, the right and the left side. So once again, I'm going to just ink up off to the side here, I'm going to stamp off and then coming in on the left side of the card, I'm going to add a few of these swirls. All right, see how nice and light that is? Okay, that's perfect for what we're doing today. Now let me clean off my stamp. And to do that, I always just use a moistened microfiber cloth and I clean immediately after I use my stamp. And the majority of that ink comes off rather easily. And if it stains your stamp, don't worry because the stamp's still gonna work just, just fine. Okay, now being that I stamped this off in such a light coat of ink, it's probably really dry right now, but what I'm gonna do is just kinda shake it in the air, give it a small blast of heat from my heat tool. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to emboss next. And I want that ink to be completely dry. I don't want any of my embossing powder to stick to that. All right, let's bring in that little strip. Now, it just so happens on this particular strip, I can still see the word magic and some of that same exact stamp that was placed 
on to here already. So that's going to be like a perfect combination. Now, with this strip, you know, it's all up to you how wide you want it to be. Like I told you, this was two inches long, two inches wide, I'm sorry, and five and three quarter inches long. If you only wanted to make this an inch wide, that's perfectly fine. That's up to you. What we're going to do is I'm just simply going to adhere this with my glue. Bring in my designer glue here, and I'm just going to get a nice thin line all the way around the edge of the card. That should be plenty. Remember, if you are using this type of glue, you want to put the needle back into that metal tip to keep that from drying. If by chance that would dry on you, all you have to do is soak it under some warm water for several minutes and pretty much you're able to clean that out easily. Now this is a tad bit long, so I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors, cut off that edge. All right, so I could actually stop right there, right? That would be a pretty cool looking card, but now we're gonna go a little bit more on here. Okay. Let's go ahead now with the Versamark. My Versamark pad is ugh, yuck looking, right? But it still works and I just keep adding more ink to this pad. So what I'm going to do is just tap, tap, tap all over my stamp with the Versamark. And I am going to place it randomly with the majority of the stamp touching that strip. Now a little bit of the stamp is going to be over that strip and I'm I'm really fine with that. That's not a problem. Now very difficult to see without a doubt. Now you can hold it up to the light and get a little bit of a shimmer but I'm sure you're not seeing it at all. So that's why I just stamp one at a time. I'm going to grab my scrap paper here Come in with the white embossing powder. Add that. Shake off the excess. Tap the back. And now I can see exactly where that white embossing powder is. I hope you can see a little bit of that. And tap off some more. Now bear with me as I get my heat tool out. How fun is that? Even the little bits that came over onto the white part, part of the card, you can see that. And I think it looks really neat, very cool. So now what I'm gonna do is just repeat that process with another of those stamps. Let me just slide this to the side. I'm going to re-ink with a Versamark. And place it on the bottom half of that strip. Bringing back in my scraps here and the white embossing powder. Let me add that to the base. Tap off the excess. And then one more time with the heat tool. I think that's so pretty, that combination of the white, the purple, the green. Beautiful. 
All right, let me just dump my excess powder back into my container here so I don't have an accident. Okay. Now, using the Versamark ink on your stamp, you need to clean that just like you would any regular ink that you would be using. So once again, I just dampen my microfiber cloth and I clean off the stamp to remove all that sticky residue. Then it'll be ready for the next time. All right, moving on. This time I'm going to use my Misty Stamping Tool and I'm going to get that all set up here, placed in the corner. And I'm going to stamp Grace. Okay, now this time I, I have it as set up a tad bit different. As you can see here, I had my strip a little more to the left, so Grace fit completely on the white part of the card. This time the majority of Grace is going to be there. Just a little bit of her flower will be on the strip itself. Some of her wings, parts of her wings will hang off, but that's okay. I, I actually like that look, that incomplete look. So let's get her picked up. And this time I'm choosing to use the Monarch. I thought about using Nocturne, but you know what? I, re I just, I really like this color combination. So I stuck with the Monarch. And I was real pleased with the result. Naturally, you can do what you want to do with color. But let's get Grace placed onto the card. Just pressing firmly. The other thing what's nice is the background. When I did that stamping of that swirl in the background, being that it's that same purple color, I'm not going to have any showing through. Now my Versamark um, Monarch is getting a little bit dry. So I'm going to do a second stamp to get a darker image here. There we go. Now, there is a small area. I'm not sure. I'll hold it up so you can see it. There is a small area right on the crease that didn't get any ink. And there's a few ways you can handle that. Let me show you what I like to do. But first, I need to clean off my stamp. Now, some people that may not bother, and that's just fine. To be honest, I'm sure people wouldn't even pay attention to that. But I tend to be a little anal. So hang on a second as I grab. Now, you could use a paintbrush for this. But I actually, I find these extremely teeny tiny, almost like a Q-tip. They're actually used for detailing cars. But what I do is I get that inked up. See, just a little bit of ink. And I'll go in there and just tap on where it's missing. Trying to get into that crease. And see, that just kind of filled it in enough that no one's really going to notice that it's missing a little bit there. No one would know except the maker. Okay. See, worked pretty good. I'm okay with that. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. And now I'm going to flip back to the acrylic block that I'm using to add the ferns at the base of her feet. I just didn't like her floating there. So to create that base, I'm using the Shady Lane along with the Woodland Ferns. In this set, you get two ferns. You get one going to the right, one going to the left, one is small, one is large. And all I'm going to do is simply create a base for her to stand on first and second generation stamping. Now, being again, now I'm stamping over this edge of the paper. As long as I press really hard there, 
I get a halfway decent um, coverage of that corner, of that edge. So I'm not too, not that concerned about it. I think that's okay. Now I'm going to just switch and grab the larger of the two ferns here and just do the same thing, creating a base for grace. I know I should be bringing the ink pad to the stamp. Bad habit of mine. All right, let me get another one here. And I think I'll get a, uh, maybe a little bit of a third one here to cover the base more. Okay, I'm content with that. Let me get my stamp cleaned off. All right, now I want to, again, give Grace just a little bit more of a base, and that's where my colored pencil will come in. And I'm just simply going to darken the area under her feet, almost creating the ground. This is something you actually could skip. I'm sure no one would notice, but that's one of my things to do. Can you see that there? A little bit of that gray under her feet. To highlight her wings, I'm going to just use a purple gel pen, and I'm just dotting those white areas that are in her wing. This just adds a little bit of interest. You could leave it completely white, you could make them any color you wanted. Green dots probably on here. Green sparkles would be really pretty, I'm sure, if you wanted to stick with that purple and green theme. Okay. All right, that's basically it for the card. Now, the last thing that I have to do is create that halo around the edge. Now, actually, let's take a peek and see. If I brought that card base in, Let's look at the difference. Now, if you wanted to keep this card super clean looking, you could just place this on the top like so. And that would be a beautiful card as it is. But I want to add a little more interest. So I am going to use the Monarch again. And I'm using a stencil brush. I'm going to just get a little bit of ink. Plus, I'm going to rub this into my work surface so that I don't get any harsh lines. Starting off the edge, I'm going to gently bring my brush across the top of the card. Rotate my card as I'm just going in a circular motion with the stencil brush. Gonna make one trip all the way around and see what I think. All right, I would like the corners to be darker, so I'm just gonna grab a little more ink, tap off, swirl, and just really focus on the corners this time around. Gently on the edge, but more pressure when I get to that corner. See the difference? I like that look better. I'm gonna just spin around. Then when I get to the corner, I'm going to apply more pressure on the brush. All the way around and apply the pressure again. Now, this is up to you. How much darker you would wanna make that around the card personal preference at this point. I'm going to stop there, clean off my work surface. I think I need a little bit of water for that. And we'll apply this topper to the card. So let me bring that base back in and my adhesive. 
Again, I run a nice thin line about an eighth of an inch to the inside of the card. I don't go right up against the edge because I have a tendency to get a little more glue on my topper than I need. If I have an area with a glob, I just kind of spread it out with my finger because I don't want it to ooze out underneath. It's no big deal if it does, but it just kind of saves a little bit of a mess. So there you have it. There's the card. Pretty simple, pretty easy, rather quick because we used already a pre-made background piece that's absolutely gorgeous. Very effective way to create a card quickly. Now, talk about quick. Let's check out this little ATC card. So here you have the ATC card. And what I'm going to do is basically the same exact thing that I did with the card. This time though, I did it a step, a, one step different. Okay, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to apply this little scrap to the card itself. I don't know if you saw, but there's a little swirl here. So I want that to be on the front for sure. So I did this on purpose. I changed the step up just to see if I could make it work. And it does work rather effectively. I think you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. You'll understand as I'm babbling here. Okay, let me get this somewhat centered. Okay, press down. Okay, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the embossing first on this one. I'm going to use an acrylic block, not my Misty. Using the Versamark, I'm going to ink up that swirl. Whoops. And press that onto the card. I'm going to go, since we have a swirl here, I'm going to add more of the swirl there. Okay, once I have that on, I'm going to grab my little pile of scrap papers here, bring in that embossing powder, oh, just off thumbs today, all right, let me heat that. Bear with me for a second. You can watch the magic. I still love watching that melt. I, it's just kind of magical. Okay, fun already, just as it is. Okay, let me clean up this powder so I don't have a terrible accident. Now what I did here, let me get this, I have to get this glue, this Versamark off of my stamp. So let's get that cleaned off. Now what I did different was the order in which, remember on the card I stamped the background this time, I want the edges to be a little darker. So all I did was bring in my Monarch ink and just tap the very top of that swirl. And I'm going to randomly add those swirls down the side of the card. See how much darker they are than the background of the card? I just wanted this to be a little bit different. ATCs are awesome to make because number one, they help use up scraps in so many ways. You can mop up extra ink that you have laying on your work surface right onto a card and then just put that card aside until you're ready to make something of it. I literally have hundreds sitting on my desk, mainly is to mop up excess ink or for me to add excess um, stamping or whatnot to it. And then I go back to these little things and just add a few 
words or a few little stamps and I've just got the greatest trading card. All right, so just to finish this one off, I used that little butterfly from those sweet fairy bugs and I stamped it in the Monarch. I'll set it here. And then I took those words. This is the three blessings. The first one is hope. And using the monarch for each of the words. Let's see how I can get all three to fit on this one. Remember when you're stamping sentiments, don't push too hard because it's real easy to flatten the words and then you'll get like some letters looking kind of fat and sloppy. All right, let's get the happiness. Press down and up. And last, I have the word faith. Same thing, gonna use the Monarch ink again. Whoops, I better get that on there a little straighter. That'll give me a reason to stamp it crooked. Okay, and now the word faith. Very simple, quick and easy ATC card using up scraps of paper. Now I can come in here with my gel pen if I want and add the purple to the wings and then to even give it a little more sparkle I'm going to use the clear jelly roll right over top. One thing nice about using these pre-made papers is you don't have to worry about the ink blending or the bleeding of the inks. These are already done, dried. They're just they're just gorgeous. Okay, so how simple was that? Just a great little ATC card. And if you ever get the opportunity to join in a swap with ATCs, they're just really a lot of fun. And these little mini pieces of artwork I cherish. I think they're precious. So let's take a look. Here is the original card that I did. And here's the one we created today. Main difference is I just have that strip a little further to the center on the right card. But as you can see, no problem, it works out well. And as far as that little ATC card goes, now here I inked the edges, here I didn't. I just wanted you to see a nice variation of those cards. Hey, thanks so much again for watching. I always appreciate you taking the time to see my creations and to watch my videos. And please, if you decide to try something like this with your scraps, I would love to see what you create. So make sure you tag me in your post, get them on our Facebook pages and share with all of us. Once again, thanks so much. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.